All right, everybody, this is Ross. Today we're gonna to look at my strawberries because this is, of course, really the first fruit of the year is some kind of June-bearing strawberry, or at least a, a strawberry that produces strawberries early in the season. Uh, not every variety actually does that, uh, to my knowledge, but uh, some varieties, they only produce in June. I know that for sure. And then once they produce in June, or the spring, I should say, that's it. Uh, there's nothing after that, and they'll just send out runners. So what I have here is, uh, as you guys probably know from prior strawberry videos that I've done, is that I constructed this little coffin. This is what I call the strawberry coffin, or uh, a strawberry closet, because we actually have the strawberries, which are right underneath, protected uh, by netting, and it's in a raised bed. So we get a couple nice little benefits here. The fact that it's in a raised bed gives the strawberries a little bit of extra soil temperatures earlier in the spring, which gets their metabolisms going quicker. And they can typically produce actually earlier in the season and maybe even more throughout the season. Uh, and just with a higher soil temperature, for sure, these strawberries definitely appreciate that. Um, and you know what? We also can add organic material that way a lot easier. So, you know, you create yourself a strawberry bed where you pr you put down kind of like how you would create a garden. You put down cardboard down, then you put down your compost over top, and you just plant directly right into that compost. The strawberries love that. They grow super well in that. Don't really have to ever water them. Um, and then of course, because it's in a raised bed, it has wooden sides. And I'm very easily then able to construct a box for the top of the strawberry bed uh, that then has a hinge. So this is like a door that opens, like I said, like a closet or a screened in door is kind of how I think about it because we also attached to the top insect netting. So we keep out all the insects. The only thing that really gets in here is slugs. So they can still find their way in here. Uh, it's not the end of the world, actually, I've learned. Uh, there are slugs here and there, but it's not like something I'm, you know, overrun with at this point um, after doing this for a couple years. But it is nice because not only do we have the insect netting on, we keep out all the insects, but we also keep out, by the way, all the critters. So the raccoons, the squirrels, the skunks, the birds, the groundhog, they all love these strawberries. So for me, I think it's just been the perfect solution or just a great way of growing strawberries. Here in this bed here, I've planted a variety called Mara de Bois. And uh, today is, by the way, May 31st. This is typically when they start coming in. So this is a typical year for the strawberries. And it's easy actually to come in here. I think the only thing I would change with the strawberry bed is I would come in here and I would build a higher raised bed so that you don't have to bend down like this. Maybe it could be at my waist. And for the future, that's what I'll probably do is maybe you have yourself a nice little hillside or a hill or a berm and then just construct exactly what I built here on the top of that hill. And that way you can harvest while standing up. But um, for me, it's been a, a very productive way of growing these strawberries. And I'll just show you some of the strawberries right here that we've got. Again, this is a variety called Mara de Bois. They come in all, sh all kinds of shapes, sizes, and typically the more red that they are, the better they taste. And some of these have a little bit of like a salmon pink color or an orange color to them. So that's what you kind of want to wait for is for that to turn red, which is probably from the salmon or pink color another day. Um, it's just a little bit tricky sometimes getting good quality fruit from Mara de Bois because the fruits are so soft. So they can spoil and they can mold and they can, you know, definitely go bad a lot quicker than other varieties of strawberries. However, when you do get them perfect, they are seriously one of the best, if not the best tasting strawberry. And because they're so soft, they just melt right in your mouth. You don't even have to chew them. You could literally squeeze this with your hands, with my hand, 
the same way you would do this with the roof of your mouth and your tongue, and it just melts in your mouth. There's no chewing required. You don't even need teeth to eat these. So I know a lot of you guys out there right now, I know a lot of you guys don't have any teeth, so this is a perfect fruit for you. But um, yeah, for sure <laughs> that uh, <laughs> this is honestly, in my mind, such a great strawberry for flavor, but also I just wanna mention for production is that this strawberry produces a pretty good crop at this time of the year. Even though it's not a June bearing strawberry, it's an ever bearing or day neutral. I can't remember which one it is. But the strawberry will continue to produce till about all the way through all the way through June here in this climate. So about a month from June 1st to June 31st or June 30th, excuse me. And then we'll resume August 1st. So it takes a little bit of a break off in January or July, excuse me, when it's really warm, but then it just goes off like crazy. It produces more flowers um, starting in July. It puts out runners in July. And then from August all the way to frost, which is in November, this strawberry produces fruit. So for a four solid months out of the year, this thing produces fruit and at a very high quality. And uh, for me, you can't beat it. There's no reason to ever buy strawberries. There's no reason to uh, really, in my mind, grow any other variety, unless you really wanted to try something else. You wanted to have a good June berry producer that will produce a lot of fruit at one time. That's another alternative. But uh, for me, it's, uh, it's amazing. Now, the one question I think I get the most with this coffin or this closet before I let you guys go well, what about pollinators, Ross? What about the bees? How do they get in here if you have the, uh, the insect netting on? Well, very simply, this door opens up when the flowers are there, and then I close it when the fruits have set. And there is a period of which there are only flowers, and there are a period of which there are only fruits. So when there are only fruits, I close the door. When there are only flowers, I open the door. And sometimes even, by the way, uh, during the day, I'll come out here, open the door, prop it open with this board, and let the bees come in, and then at the end of the day, I close it. Uh, so it's up to you. However you want to do it, I have not had any sort of pollination issue I've seen so far. This works out great, keeps everything out except for the slugs, and uh, you get really, really nice fruits. So anyway, I'm going to stuff my face now. Uh, thank you guys for watching this one. Check out the other videos we've done on strawberries. I'm growing a number of different varieties. We've compared them. But once again, this is the first berry of the year. And it's also typically uh, one of the best and the best producers. Take care, guys. We'll see you soon.